we have just opened an exhibition called Frank Lloyd Wright in the City, Density versus Dispersal, which has an interesting history because in the long conversations between Columbia, MoMA, and the Frank Lloyd Wright Foundation about the monumental historical transfer of these archives, uh, we agree that there should be some presentation to the public uh, a little bit after the first year. The idea that we would explore the idea of the city through demonstrations of Frank Lloyd Wright's work is what we settled upon. To look at the archive through a research lens that investigates not only the masterworks but the master thinking of Frank Lloyd Wright um, as a major figure in not only American architecture but in architectural thought and planning across the world. Wright had a fascinating love-hate relationship with cities in general and with New York City in particular. The centerpiece of the exhibition and probably the largest single object uh, in the entire archive is the model that he made of his conception of Broadacre City in the mid-1930s. For him, Broadacre City was a new kind of city. When we look at it, we might even think it's an anti-city. Even as late as the 1950s, when he's doing the last textual update of Broadacre City, he also designs the supreme skyscraper, an idea for a skyscraper one mile high for Chicago, which he says in one, one note among the papers in the archive, this tower could hold the entire population of Broadacre City. This man is, you know, uh, working, with a, working with an open contradiction. In terms of the audience that we bring, uh, students, classes from Columbia regularly are going down to MoMA um, on gallery visits with Barry or other members of the curatorial team, as well as coming into Avery Archives to explore all the other material that uh, helps to flesh out uh, the themes that we're presenting in the exhibition. The current exhibition uh, had its origins in a class here at Columbia, so the students worked on those projects and discussed them. Um, they went to see the exhibition. They almost felt as though it was their exhibition uh, at the end, but they also could see how the curatorial work works, how you have to make choices, uh, how you have to tell a story, a complicated story with a, a small number of parts. Both institutions recognized that this would involve a new kind of commitment between our two cultural heritage institutions and a set of transformational changes would likely need to take place in each of our operations independently and when we work together. Everybody knows Frank Lloyd Wright drawings. Few people understand how big the rest of the archive actually is. There's over a thousand boxes that came with material in it from the uh, foundation in Scottsdale. There are boxes of correspondence, um, roughly 112,000 pieces of correspondence, uh, over 40,000 photographs, uh, 600 manuscripts, among many other items. There's also large numbers of reels of film of Wright speaking or um, being filmed. Scholarship on Frank Lloyd Wright is probably, along with Le Corbusier, uh, the most voluminous on any architect of the 20th century. And up until the, tra the transfer of these materials to New York, uh, scholars of Frank Lloyd Wright would need to seek out the materials very poetically on the properties that Frank Lloyd Wright had created. But bringing them to New York makes them infinitely more accessible um, to many, many more people. One of the things that to me is most striking uh, for the Frank Lloyd Wright archive or any archive is the importance of the legacy documentation. There are Frank Lloyd Wright buildings that were never built. There are Frank Lloyd Wright buildings that have been lost to us because of destruction for one reason or another. The living evidence of that work is the archival documentation. And so having this repository is very important for the hundreds of Wright buildings that there are uh, across the country and beyond, since Wright also built in Japan, for instance. Uh, homeowners, men, uh, an extraordinary percentage of Wright's buildings are actually houses. We have the records of their house. So that's incredibly valuable for Frank Lloyd Wright um, owners. All of these groups have access to these extraordinary materials at Avery. Together, our resources in terms of expertise and infrastructure can support world-renowned collections 
better than we could do individually. That's a key uh, important thing and it is a model making structure for not only the MoMA Columbia collaboration but for other institutions who may want to take on the responsibility of major works such as those of Frank Lloyd Wright.